Uh, I said the baddest man on the planet, America, you have an Olympic champ. Yeah, I'm going to say, you're 125 kilogram Olympic champ. Okay, I'm just going to go up in three, two, the, the baddest man on the planet, you're 125 kilogram Olympic champion. Boom. American flag. Do it. That's a Can't beat it. Hold on, I'm going to change that to I'm an Olympic champion. I'm just going to say gold. Forget it. Gold. 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 <laughs> oh. Point. Less is more. I like it. Okay, I'm ready in three, two. One. Gold. All right. Gabriel, you're, you're probably gonna get asked about that 13 seconds uh, forever. Um, have you ever done anything like that? No, that was a f besides Probably in the practice room. Mm, that was the first time I've ever been. I've been, I've been in many matches where it's been deep waters, mm -hmm. but that was a way different scenario. Uh, I don't know. When someone asks me about that 13 seconds, you're just gonna have to go watch it because that was some I can't describe. I probably will never be able to describe. No. Have you watched it? I watched it once, but like I go on Twitter and it says it's not available in, my, in the country. So I, I really can't watch it, but I don't know. It's there's so many like crazy emotions that went into that, like heart, like dedication. Like 13 seconds is almost impossible to get two takedowns. Then I I got two takedowns, 13 seconds on a three-time world champ. It's it's something outrageous. Yeah, it, it was. The whole thing was outrageous. The match. Uh, it's, I'm sure we'll circle back to the 13 seconds, but. The match really had a lot of ups and downs. I mean, it started off, I'm like, he's, I didn't even attack him, yeah. right? You get in on that high crotch and, and he tips you and for two. Yeah. What's your thought in that moment? Um, I, I was still up by a good amount. Um, I think it was 5-2 when he did that. Then he, he took another swing, swing high crotch and he was gutting me. And I was looking at the clock like, ooh. I, I was like, the emotions were going up and down. I, I was on a high, then all of a sudden I hit like a low. But like, in my head, I was like, I got, I got enough time. Just maybe I can squeak one. And I, I, his breathing was getting heavy, and I, I just felt it. And like I said, the last ten seconds of that was was something different. I just don't know. Yeah, it, it certainly was. Watching you, I've watched you a really, really long time, and a lot of your matches, you, you outclass your opponents technically. You outclass them with your speed. You outclass them a lot of different ways. To see you break someone of that caliber, what, what kind of work, what kind of increased workload on, uh, have you put in to be able to add that to your roster? Because now it was like Gable can beat anyone, it's six minutes, it was tough. Now you're, you're, you're breaking a, a legend. Um, we, just, we just go hard every day. We just, we're pushing ourselves on and off the mat. Um, to, be, to be able to, to, to push someone of that caliber to the end is, is something different because a lot of guys don't, don't see those guys hit that wall. And I know for me to, to pull that match out, I had to push him to that wall and I had to fight myself through my own wall too. And that's what, that's what I did. And I, I try to push myself as best I can and it, it paid off. 2019 Gable Stevenson, um, you, you lost two matches to Quiz to, to not make the world team there. How does the match with Gable Stevenson now go with that guy? Gable? Oh, there, there's so much difference from, from Gable from that time, you know, I. I, I got refocused, got relocked in, made sure I was doing everything correctly. You know, I even won the NCAA tournament that year. So I was, I was just a, another person on the scene trying to make a name for themselves. And so the next year I came in, I changed a lot of things. I grew up, matured as a person, and I came back and just, just worked every day. I know people close to me weren't stunned by, by the results, but a lot of people were starting to, oh, Gable's taking the game serious now. And, I knew this was the mission for me to, to come to Olympic Games, 
did I think I was gonna wrestle those two guys, Agu and Precious Vili, and, and come out with a gold medal. It was there, but it was unlikely for a lot of people, but I knew I could do it, and I, I pushed myself, and I made it this far, and it, it's, some, it's some crazy that two years ago I was second string, and now two years later I'm, I'm on top of the world. Yeah, um, thinking about going through that path um, is, is absolutely incredible. Do you, do you like a setup like that? Did having that Aku win going into the finals, did that, did that make you more, more confident? It's confident, I don't even know if you had that. It, it, it was definitely a, a booster because he, he, you know, he's Olympic champ. And so for me to go on there and beat him 8-0 was some like, oh, I can, I'm here to hang with them. And for me to do it to Pesha's really and push him to that brink, push him to the wall and, and make sure that he can, he gives up the, the last takedown in the last second was, was something different. Um, I, t I took out two of some of the greatest heavyweights in the past two days and not many people can say they did that. Um, with, with Gino, he was, he was very distraught. He was distraught on the podium. Did, what kind of interaction, I saw he, he mm -hmm. held you on the podium, you yeah. had a little interaction there. Did, was there any, any words exchanged? I know there's probably a language barrier with him. No, he, he said congratulations. He said good job. Taha said the same thing. Um, me and Ty actually exchanged singlets, so I have a singlet in my bag. I told wow. him, I told him his, that's the only singlet that I wanted, and so he gave me his, and that thing is not going to move for forever. Um, but I, he, was, he was very distraught, but I feel like it was both a big deal for us to win, and I probably, if I would have lost, it probably would have been the same way. But I'm not on the other end of the book right now, so I don't know how he's really feeling, but I know how I'm feeling, and I'm feeling really good. I know you've answered the question already before, but so that we can get it on tape, what, to, like, what is next for you? Uh, what is next for me? Yeah, I'm going to go upstairs, take a shower, and I'm going to watch Kyle Snyder win go tomorrow. I mean, in terms of school, uh, yeah. WWE, UFC, whatever. Uh, I don't know. Um, just going to take it one day at a time. Just, just going to limousine ride and jet fly, and I'm going uh, to see what Ric Flair does. No, I'm joking. Um, I don't know. Just... I'm just going to keep doing my thing like I've always done and just live my life the way I wanted to. And I got a great support staff. I got great coaches. So we're going to go back, discuss it, and call our next, call our next trip. You've been talking about this for a long time, obviously. Uh, confident you'd come here and give yourself a great shot at, at the winning Olympic gold. When you had envisioned uh, how these couple days played out, compare contrast, what does it feel like now? That, that you got that gold bell around your neck and the experience. I don't know. It's just it's just like a heavy bling on my neck right now. I, I like no emotions have like hit me. You know, like you don't really feel it. You're like on a different planet, yeah. like cloud nine. So yeah. I'm gonna just settle down and just stay level headed and make sure make sure all my people know that I st we still I still got support back home and making sure they know they got support for me. Nothing's gonna change. Um, I'm gonna stay the same person that I was before I came here. Um, this is another thing to add to my legacy, but as a person, I'm, I gotta stay the same. I gotta do what I gotta do to, to make, my, make my ends meet. But it really hasn't hit. This gold medal on my neck is crazy, but I know I'm gonna go home and it's gonna smack me right in the face. But it's wild, yeah. Something that I've dreamed of. Yeah, at what point in this progression did you first start thinking an Olympic gold medal is a realistic possibility? Uh, I don't know. Probably. I think realistically, probably after the Olympic trials, when I, when I did, did the performance that I had, and it, it kind of turned a couple people's heads, and then I just knew I had it in me after that. I knew I had to change a couple things, eat right, get back in the gym quick, and just had to flip the switch, and I came here, and I just, I saw, I've been watching those guys wrestle for a long time, and I knew the, the style that I brought would, would bring a little mix match, and there's two, and just, at the end of the day, just wrestle six minutes hard and just go out there and have fun, let it fly. You, you had a, a gopher contingent behind you. You had Coach Yegum, your coach. Uh, coach Bramble has been here. He's been your training partner. Just talk about those two and the impact they, they had on, on getting you to this point. You know, I've been knowing Egum since I was, since I moved to Minnesota my seventh grade year. And, you know, I've, I've always been dedicated to the Minnesota program. And, you know, we there's, there's a lot of things that have gone into it, a lot of, a lot of behind the scenes that, that we have done to get better. You know, he's always been there for me. You know, I've always been there for him. And then Bramble came in my freshman year, 
he was new to the new to it, but he 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 changed everything with me too. He became a practice partner, became a close friend, and since then it's just they they come with me everywhere I go. I, I talk to them, I talk about them for decisions. They they give me best advice because they've been in that spot too. So, you know, to have that support system that I have, something different. And you know, we're all, we're all riding this train together. We never we never hopped off the train. It's just gonna keep going forward. What were you thinking, uh, standing there watching that flag go up and hearing the anthem? I'm a gold medalist. <laughs> uh, from I, I really want to, as much as you can, as much as you're able, get into the the technical, the nitty gritty of what you were doing in that that last 13 seconds. Like, how'd you get the first take down? How did that materialize in that that second? To be honest, it was a straight heart. Um, like I said, I've never I've never been in, in that deep of spots so many times in my wrestling career, but I knew that one of the times I was gonna hit that spot at this tournament and I was gonna be I was gonna be down. But just running through it, I think um it's hard to describe. I just I took a fake shot, he he bit it really hard, then I hit hit the underhook and he thought I was gonna whip him over, but I took it out and I circled and I just kept circling and circling, circling, circling. And then I scored two and I looked at the clock and it was point two and the rest of history. Yeah, you immediately, I mean, hit, you're like, you're the rest right here, you're giving him, throwing up the juice, you see the clock, you knew you got it. Yeah, I just, I was looking at the clock while I was spinning and I peeped it and I was like, ain't no way. And it just clock hit and he, he kind of broke down and that's when I knew that it was, it was on time and he challenged it, but I was like, there's no possible way they can flip it. And then I just ran to egg him and I jumped and I caught him. Cause you know, I don't want to jump on him. He probably would have fell off the stage. <laughs> <laughs> so I, so I, he caught me No, I caught him and yeah, it was, it's something crazy. Like some that I, it's hard to describe. You, you gotta, you gotta be in that moment to feel it. You know, you're, you're, a, you're a big guy, but watching, I think every single one of your match, you look substantially outsized uh, to me yeah. from there. Did you feel that at, at all in, in any of the matches? No, head to head, I feel like I, I was I was fairly um, tight with those guys. Um, height wise, they're a lot taller, but I think um, just my agility, my athleticism, it kept a good style and pace with them. But those guys are, those guys are best in that country. You know, it's, it is the Olympic games different sizes, different weights. Everyone's bigger, everyone's smaller. It's just like, who got the bigger heart at the end of the day? Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, you know, you're, you're gonna get inundated with every option in, in the world. Uh, superstardom seems imminent. And, you know, you're, you're, you're wrestling. Future is, is unknown, I guess we, we can safely say that. Just maybe put a, put a bow on what you think about the sport, what it's meant to you, how much you enjoy performing. Damn, uh, man, I, I enjoy so much being able to put on a show. You know, wrestling has gained me the, um, the leverage to, to, to be a, an outside person. You know, I've, I've met so many crazy people like Brock Lesnar, you know what I'm saying, Triple H. I've, I've talked to famous UFC fighter like John Jones and Cormier can call me whenever he wants to. Like it's. It's, it's got me to the place where I've, where I've turned myself into a whole different person, more than just a wrestler. And that's what I always wanted to be when I, when I got older. And I know that there are certain steps to take, but wrestling has opened way too many doors. And today, the whole world is open for me to see, and I'm going to go explore it. Awesome. Gable, congrats. You made us Thanks. all proud. Incredible. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.